Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, welcome to Not Theory and Topics in Not Theory. I have to start with an apology, so I didn't sleep terribly well last night. I will let you guess why. So it means that I didn't prepare well enough for today and it also means that, uh, you know, if I go incoherent at some point, uh, please be kind and stop me. And otherwise I might stop myself before the end of the hour. Okay, just if I run out of steam. But anyway, I did prepare something. So, uh, okay, but first of all, okay, the topic today is the fundamental group or the not group. Uh, often called. So the not group uh, and uh, I, I don't have much to say. I have some things to say and some things that are too much uh, but on the other hand it's such an extremely natural invariant of knots. It comes up immediately. You cannot ignore it. You cannot give a course titled topics in knot theory without at least mentioning the fundamental, the, the, the knot group, okay? So we will mention the knot group and we will actually do a few things about it as well. Uh, there will be a homework assignment on the web by midnight and I hope I will clear my marking backlog soon. I'm sorry I'm, I've fallen behind. And I want to say that we are switching out of finite type invariants. We might come back at some point uh, to, to do some of the points here, but I wanted to say that, well, it's a topics class, so we touch lots of topics, but it also means that in each topic we don't go all the way. So we didn't go all the way when we talked about Hovano homology, we're also not going all the way when we're, we're talking about finite tapping variants. So there is another proof of the fundamental theorem using the so-called knizhnik zhamologic of connection. There is another proof of the fundamental theorem using so-called associators, and this is algeb very, very algebraic, and you actually can construct uh, associators using pure algebra, so no integration in it. Uh, there is a non-proof which works by so-called step-by-step integration, so, so a weight system is, uh, is like the mth derivative, so you can ask yourself, can I find the m minus first derivative, and then can I find the m minus second derivative? So can I integrate step by step instead of integrating all the way to the end? And there is a sketch of a proof which fails, but the failure is something that one should study. Okay, one day maybe we will understand it. Okay, there are means of computing finite type invariants using, so we never talked about how to actually compute them. So there are uh, so-called Gauss diagram formulas, and we should, have, we should talk about them. Now, if you specialize to a specifically algebra and a representation, you're supposed to get things like the Jones polynomial. I mean, I've told you that you get an invariant, but how do you actually compute it? Uh, so uh, that will be the subject of quantum groups, and we're also skipping this. Then, uh, there aren't there's more than just knots in the world. So there are so-called tangles, there are, we talked about tangles, there are braids, there are two-dimensional knotted objects in R4, there are other types of knotted objects, and they all have finite type theories. Ah, all is a bit uh, optimistic, but many of them have finite type theories that are analogous to the one we talked about, but with some features different. So uh, we didn't talk about that. Uh, there is finite type invariance of three manifolds. I think I mentioned it briefly, but again, we didn't talk about this. And finally, uh, sorry, not finally, one before finally. So uh, maybe I should have said that it is, actually there is, sorry, there are two conjectures that I uh, failed to mention and that I should have mentioned, okay? So maybe I'll do that right now uh, before, uh, before moving on to the knot group. Okay, so, sorry, so, so I'll say something a little bit more. Uh, anyway, uh, so these pictures are for use later. So for now, just ignore them. Later, I'll drag them to where they should be. Okay, so uh, there are two extremely natural conjectures to make. So 
conjecture uh, one. So, you know, um, finite type invariants are like polynomials, and polynomials are dense in all functions. So, you know, if there's justice in the world, finite type invariants should be dense in, in some sense in the space of all not invariants, and therefore they should separate knots. I mean, of course not invariant separate knots, because, you know, you can just take the delta function on a specific knot class, and it will separate that knot from every other knot. Okay? So, uh, so, so if there is justice in the world, uh, finite type invariant, finite type invariant, uh, separate knots. Now, this conjecture has analogs uh, for other classes of knotted objects. So, it has analog, for example, for braids, and I think we will talk about braids in this class. I, I definitely hope to. And for braids, it is true. It also has analogs for um, uh, for example, two-dimensional knotted objects in, in R4, and there it is false. Uh, so, uh, basically, the, the, the votes are still counting for this one. Okay, we don't know if it's true or false. And the second conjecture uh, says the following. So, uh, so, you know, when, when I derived, when I told you how every Lie algebra gives a weight system, Lie algebra and representation, the analogy was very strong. So the uh, anti-symmetry relation and the STU relation and the IHX relation precisely corresponded to things in Lie theory. So it's reasonable to conjecture that it's sort of an if and only if, or more precisely, that um, the space of Lie algebraic weight systems, so if you go over all Lie algebras and all representations, and look at all the weight systems that you get this way, and you look at, uh, you allow linear, you, the span of all weight systems that you get this way, it's reasonable to conjecture that this is everything which would mean that all finite type uh, invariants uh, come from uh, Lie algebras. Now, if the two conjectures are true, then it makes the relationship between Lie algebras and, 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 and not truly intimate. Because not only you have an invariant for each uh, uh, um, for each Lie algebra and representation, but in fact these invariants are all finite type invariants and all finite type invariants separate. I mean, and finite type invariants separate knots. So invariants coming from Lie algebras and representations separate knots. So that would be amazing if the two conjectures are true. Unfortunately. The second conjecture, well, this held for a few years, uh, but uh, that one, so conjecture number two, is uh, sort of false. So why is it false? It is false because a fellow called Pierre Vogel uh, found a weight system that he could prove did not come uh, from Lie algebras. Uh, it's, so there's no way we can, we can go there without spending, uh, you know, at least two weeks, okay, to get there. Uh, but uh, but I'll, I'll just say that I am not satisfied with the status of our understanding of Vogel's work. Namely, uh, so in fact, he does use Lie algebras very, very, very deep, deeply in his work. He just uses them in a slightly different way. 
And then that doesn't rule out the possibility that there is some common generalization and that at the end of the day everything does come from Lie algebras by some uh, more intricate um, uh, construction. Uh, and the other thing is that sort of, okay, if you count dimensions, at some point I printed a table of dimensions, so you can uh, make a table of uh, uh, the, the, the dimension of A, M, and the dimension of the span of all the weight systems coming from Lie algebras and representations in degree M, and you can make the table, and computationally, I forgot the numbers, right, but they're on one of your, uh, they were on, on the blackboard on one of the classes, but the numbers match up to about M is equal to maybe 17, I'm not sure, and then they diverge, so match to 17 and diverge at uh, m equals 18, where the numbers are already huge, where the dimensions of the relevant spaces are, are in the many thousands, I don't remember, but I mean, very, very big. Uh, so, uh, uh, it's kind of odd. Normally, if, if something is false, it breaks down completely. Okay? Um, you know, so you would expect it to be false already in degree 3 if it's false, and then to get worse and worse the, the higher the degree is. We actually know extremely little uh, about the place where it gets false, and we only know very, very, like the Vogel construction is, 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 is very, very rare. It's a very small fraction of the, of, it's a, it, it diverges by just a little. So it's clear that we don't understand something. Yeah. By the way, you know, that reminds me of a completely unrelated thing, but sort of it, it um, I'm really incoherent today, uh, you know, but let me uh, tell you uh, another minor thing. So, you know, there are alternating knots. So, a knot is called alternating if when you go through it, uh, you, uh, you uh, go under, then over, then under, then over. So, you alternate going under and over. Uh, and a knot is called non-alternating if it is not alternating. So if, for example, at some point within the knot you go under something twice in a row, or maybe over something twice in a row. So this is non-alternating. And when you look at the first few uh, crossing numbers, um, the uh, so up to seven crossings, all knots are alternating. In eight crossings, there start to be very few non-alternating knots. And you sort of get the impression that maybe most knots are alternating. But then at relatively high degrees, the non-alternatings overtake the alternating. So, I don't know, I would expect something similar to happen here. That the moment we know that non-algebraic weight systems exist, at some point, the, sorry, non li algebraic weight systems exist, at some point they should become the majority. But we certainly don't know that. Okay? Should I go completely on a tangent and tell you the loveliest question in the world uh, that, that that breaks down in a, in a bizarre, in a high dimension? Is it okay? Okay, so here's a riddle. Completely unrelated to knot theory, please forgive me, I told you. I mean, it may, being, being uh, lack of sleep is some form of being drunk. Okay, so, um, riddle. 
Okay, so I'm going to define two sets. So uh, let uh, Bn uh, be the uh, largest n-dimensional ball uh, centered at zero and bound by uh, the uh, two to the n uh, unit balls uh, centered at uh, the points plus or minus one uh, to the power n. Okay, so let me express. So, so let me show you an example. So uh, in two dimensions, uh, the the points plus minus one to the n are just the point this one, this one, this one, and that one, and then. Uh, the uh, sorry, I mean uh, this this didn't come out very centered. So and then the uh, the unit ball centered at this is this one. The unit ball centered at that is that one. And then there is also that one and that one. And then B n is the biggest ball bound inside. Right? In three dimensions you will have eight balls, and somewhere nested between you'll have the red ball. Okay? Now, let uh, Cn, so let Cn be the uh, smallest uh, box uh, or cube, cube, uh, containing all of the above. So in two dimensions it's uh, uh, sorry, it's this box. Okay? In three dimensions it's harder to draw but it's the smallest box that contains all those two to the n boxes. So my question is uh, I'm, I'm really, I don't know why I'm doing it. It's probably because I'm, I'm drunk. So the question is, compute the limit as n goes from, as n goes to infinity of uh, the volume of Bn divided by the volume of Cn. Well, it's a riddle, you have to solve it. But let me tell you that if you do it up to dimension 100, so, you know, you figure out the formulas, you Google what's the volume of an n-dimensional ball, you get an answer, you, 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 you write a formula with factorials, etc. You enter it into the computer, you evaluate, you div sorry, divide by the volume of a cube, that one is easy to find. You enter it into the computer, you, 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 you plot the graph as a function of n, and, uh, and if you go to 100, you make a conjecture, and the conjecture is completely false, and things get interesting, things get interesting uh, in dimension 1206. Okay. Good. Okay. So let's go back to knot theory. Uh, uh, well, there's a lot more on finite type invariants that we will not say. Okay? But now I want to say something about the knot group. So uh, the knot group, so definition, uh, uh, if k is a knot, then uh, pi 1 of k 
and this is an abuse of notation, you'll see what I mean by in, in a moment, uh, or uh, the fundamental group of K, the fundamental uh, group of K, or simply the group of K is, so it's really the fundamental group, so K as a thing in itself is a circle, right? As a topological space, K itself is a circle. So pi 1 of a circle would be Z, always, for all nodes. It's stupid, it's silly, there's nothing interesting to say about it. So when you write pi 1 of K, you automatically mean pi 1 of the complement of K. So it's pi 1 of R3 minus K. The space that remains if you remove the knot. Okay? So examples, uh, what's uh, pi 1 of uh, the knot? So pi 1 of the knot, well, it's not z this way, right? It's not the z where you, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the fundamental group of the complement. The complement of a, a, of a circle has fundamental group uh, also z, because you, you can have a loop that wraps around the circle. Okay, and that's the generator. Uh, so, uh, so that one is z. But now I want to compute pi 1 of, say, the trefoil knot. I'll compute it in two different ways by the end of, uh, I don't know if I'll do it by the end of the hour, but I want to compute something like that, right? And if you look at the complement, it seems very complicated. How do you compute it? Okay? So, I want to give you one example. So, uh, example, uh, uh, let's compute pi 1 of, I'll generalize this, of the so-called TPQ, uh, of TPQ, where TPQ is the so-called PQ torus uh, not, uh, not, sorry, and let me explain what is the TPQ torus not, so let me, so what is the PQ torus not, let me construct it, sorry, I should have say where uh, P and Q are two numbers, what do you call numbers that are strange? Numbers that have no common factors. Relatively prime. Relatively prime, right. Are, sorry, relatively uh, prime. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so here it is. So, first of all, uh, the torus, the torus is really the unit square, so 0, 1 up to 0, 1, with the top identified, the bottom identified to the top and the right identified with the left. I hope you've seen this. Or alternatively, you can think of it as R2 modded out by Z2. Okay? And this thing maps into uh, R3 and the standard embedding in R3 looks a bit like this. So now, consider the curve uh, gamma of t equals, so I don't know, let's call this embedding um, tau. So gamma of t will be uh, tau of uh, p times t comma Q times T. Uh, and this is, uh, so gamma is a map from the interval from 0 to 1 
into uh, R3, but in fact, um, uh, gamma of 0 is equal to gamma of 1, because, um, because gamma of 0 is tau of 0, 0, and gamma of 1 is tau of p and q, but p and q are both integers, so, so and we're modding out by z squared, I mean, the, the, I mean tau is defined on r2 modulo z, z2, so, um, so, 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 so tau of pq is, is, is tau of 0, 0. Also, since p and q are relatively prime, you can check that other than that, it's an injection. So really, it's a map from 0, 1 modulo 0 is equivalent to 1. And once you mod, mod out by this, uh, it's one, a 1 to 1 map. And if you mod out by this, uh, then uh, this is simply a circle. So gamma is a um, is a not is a a knot a knot, okay? But what does the knot look like? So let's do an example. So suppose uh, uh, p is equal to uh, three and q is equal to two, okay? So I start at zero zero. So now I'm drawing the curve PT, QT as a curve on the unit square. So I, uh, I start at 0, 0, and the X coordinate progresses faster than the Y coordinate. Okay? So uh, basically when X so, so it, it, it goes on slow, at slope uh, two-thirds, I think. So, basically, uh, when, you, when, when t runs until uh, one-third, you get to here. Okay? Then, uh, you reappear here and continue to here. Then you reappear here and continue to here. Then you reappear here and continue to here, and you're done. Right? And you came to the beginning. So, while doing this, you went three times from left to right, right? So, one, uh, two, and then three. And only twice uh, from down to up. Or, you know, if you don't believe me, here's a way to see it. Uh, take some generic vertical line, and you've crossed it three times, and ch take some generic horizontal line, and you've crossed it only twice. So you went around three times one way, and two times the other way. And then when you wrap it on the torus, the image looks like, now I'm going to fail drawing it, but the image looks like uh, you... Uh, wrap around uh, in one direction uh, some number of times and, and, and at the same time you wrap in the other direction a different number of times and since I knew I was going to fail drawing it uh, here is a picture so uh, uh, so here is a picture. Sorry. Uh, here is a picture. Let's copy it and uh, paste it down where we need it. Uh, may, sorry, maybe I'm trying to play games that are above my... Uh, above the ability of my programs. So, uh, where is the mouse? Uh, 
paste. Good. So this is the no so this example is the note T eight three. Okay. So uh, okay. So now I want to compute pi one of say T eight three. T eight three. Of course, I mean T P Q. Oh, you can check that it eight three by counting. So. You wrap one way, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, and the other way, uh, you cross every line only three times. Okay? So, um, uh, so it's the A3 torus knot. Uh, okay, how do you compute uh, pi 1? So you use uh, Van Kampen's theorem. So let me remind you what does Van Kampen's theorem say. It says that um, so uh, Van uh, Kampen says that uh, if uh, A, B, and A intersect B are, so A and B are subsets of the same space, and A, B, and inter A intersect B are path connected, so I'll just write connected, but I'll mean path connected. Uh, and if uh, there is a base point B inside uh, the intersection, then pi 1 of A uh, intersect, sorry, union, the point is to find the pi 1 of the union. So pi 1 of A uh, union B is equal to pi 1 of A uh, free product or amalgamated product over pi 1 of A intersect B uh, with uh, pi 1 of B. And you know what? Let's um, let's uh, uh, let, let's make it concrete. So, or let's uh, really what it means is that uh, pi one here is the set of all words whose letters alternate between elements of pi one of a with elements of pi one of b. But if something can be counted as belonging to both pi one of a and pi one of b then you make its two copies equal. Okay? Uh, so, um, uh, here is a more uh, precise uh, way of saying it. So, this is... So, maybe I'll just uh, write this in more detail. But first, let me um, uh, tell you that since uh, pi, since A intersect B is a subset of A, there is a map from pi 1 of A intersect B to pi 1 of A, and there is also a map from pi 1 intersect B into pi 1 of B, and let's call, let's call these maps alpha and beta, then this amalgamated product is just the free product of pi 1 of A with pi 1 of B modulo the relation so, you know, the free product is you just is made of words where you alternate a word, a letter here, a letter here, a letter here, a letter here, okay? And the um, um, uh, uh, the relation is that for every uh, gamma inside the intersection, uh, pi 1, sorry, not what am I doing, sorry. Um, uh, alpha of, oh, I shouldn't have used gamma, but okay. Alpha of gamma is equal to beta of gamma. So if you regard gamma as a member here, or as a member here, they're made equal. Okay, so that's Van Kampen's theorem, now let's use it. So, the two sets 
I want to use the Van Kampen theorem on are the inside of this torus and the outside of this torus. Okay? But they should intersect. Right? So let's blow them a little bit. So let A be the set. So basically, look at the inside of this torus. Make the torus out of metal, of metal wire and kind of put membranes, a membrane around it, so, so it bounds the set A, and then blow air into the membrane so that A gets inflated a little bit. And uh, if you want to know what it looks like, then uh, I need to do again the copy-paste trick. And uh, I'm sorry. Ah, here it is. Good. So this is this is A. Right? So uh, so A uh, sorry now let me uh, magnify it. Nah. You know what? It doesn't matter. So, uh, so this is A. Again, it's the inside of the torus knot blown up a little bit, but since the torus knot was holding it down, you get this. So it looks a bit like a challah bread. Okay? And the picture here is not B. The picture here is the complement of B. So, 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 so now put the same membrane around the torus knot and slurp out, slurp out some air so it kind of shrinks into in, inside and B is the outside of this so, the com so this is a picture of the complement of B okay so what are um, what are all the sets what are, what, what, are, what are all the things here so A is Topologically, it's just a ring, right? So it's just a solid, uh, solid torus. So uh, pi one of A is just uh, Z, and I actually want to give a name to this Z. So let's call it the Z generated by a generator A lowercase a. So the generator lowercase a is basically a curve that goes around this way. This is lowercase a. Okay? Now, what is b? So b, well, actually the complement of a torus in S3 is also a torus. And if you haven't seen that, it doesn't really matter because I don't really want to know what is B. I only want to know what is pi 1 of B. And we already talked about it. Pi 1 of B, all right, B is the outside here. So pi 1 of B is uh, generated by a loop that goes around the torus. This way. So this is B. Okay? So pi 1 of b is also z, but it's the z generated by a single generator b. Okay? Now, uh, what is a intersect b? So uh, a intersect b, ah, so a intersect b uh, looks like, uh, oh, I should say, in all of these pictures, I exclude the knot itself. So the knot itself is sort of the, uh, the, the ribs here, or in this picture, it's the valleys here. So in all of the pictures I include, I exclude the red shape. Okay? So what does the... So what's A intersect B? So it's like... 
it's, it's basically a, a, a band that rolls around the knot. Okay, so A intersect B looks like a band like this, so the profile, I, I didn't do it quite right, uh, the profile is uh, like this, but it, it, is a, it, is, it is really a circle multiplied by a long circle and it wraps all around the knot. If you want another picture, I'll have to remove my belt and it doesn't really matter because you don't see it. You don't see anything. So basically, now my hand is a part of the torus knot and A intersect B is like a band that wraps around it. Okay? I don't know if it's... it's, if, if it's is it clear? Should I put it nearer the, near, near the video? Okay? Uh, Jessica, is it clear? I don't know if you... So again, here is A intersect B. This is... It's this band here, but it rolls around the torus uh, P times in one way and Q times the other way. Is it... Okay. Um, uh, so is it clarified? So is it like this? It's like the same. It's kind of like the knot, right? It's like the same as the original. Actually, it's the knot, knot. but shifted a little bit. So the knot yeah. is the red thing, and the band is like the green thing, as shown here. But it's so it's the knot shifted a bit. So like the knot, it rolls around eight times in one direction and three times in the other direction. But the band itself looks like basically a, 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 I don't know what, a bygone cross a circle. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so what is uh, pi 1 of uh, A intersect B? Well, A intersect B is just a circle, topology, a homotopic to a circle, homotopy equivalent to a circle, so pi 1 of it is also Z. Okay? But the generator, if you call the generator here, maybe I should have called it C. So, um, the generator here wraps around in one direction three times, and in the other direction, eight, time, eight times. So alpha of C is equal to, so alpha, so going this way, we go three times, so is equal to A cubed, and beta of C is equal to B to the eight. So therefore, what is the fundamental group of A union B? So, namely, what is the fundamental group of our knot? Maybe we should call, uh, go by name of TA3. It's the group generated by the fundamental group of A, so it's just the generator A. The fundamental group of B, so it's just the generator B. And modulo the relation that A cubed is equal to B to, A, A cubed is equal to B to the 8 a cubed is equal to b to the 8. Okay? Done. Computed. Okay? But this just goes to show you that you sometimes get funny groups or interesting groups. Uh, so, by the way, what is the fundamental group, so what is the knot group of the trefoil knot? So, if you think about it, the trefoil knot is uh, just the torus knot T32, right? It's a bit hard to see the torus because there is not enough of a knot to show it. But if you, but that's what it is. Uh, so, uh, so the fundamental group is the group generated by A and B modulo uh, A cubed is equal to B squared, or maybe the other way around. It doesn't matter, of course. Okay, good. So, okay, you can be as clever as you want, or you can be very clever, 
with uh, using um, um, uh, Van, Van Kampen's theorem. I was going to say Van der Veen because I have a collaborator, Van der Veen. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can get very clever with using Van Kampen's theorem for complicated knot, but at some point you want something systematic. So let me compute pi 1 of the trefoil in a way that will make it more systematic. Okay? So another, uh, another computation of pi 1, of pi 1 of uh, the trefoil. And again, the reason I'm computing pi 1 of the trefoil is that this is the only knot I know how to draw. But, of, but, but, but this is, I could have done anything else. So here is the idea. So first of all, I have to choose a base point. The base point will be my eye here. In fact, you know, the lens of the video camera. So, uh, and I'll draw elements of the fundamental group by drawing um, uh, little uh, arrows that go under the knot. So when I draw uh, this arrow, it goes under the knot. And what it really means, when I draw such a little arrow, it really means that you started from the base point, you went by a straight line, and since the knot is drawn in a planar way, if you go by a straight line to the beginning point, you don't hit the knot everywhere. You go under the knot, and then you go to the head of the arrow, and then you come back. Okay? So, uh, for the trefoil knot, there will be several such possibilities. For example, there is this one, but there is also uh, that one. But these two are clearly equal because, you know, if you had a, you know, if you had your loop, you could just slide it this way. Okay? So I don't need to consider that one. I can erase it. It's the same as, uh, uh, it's the same as uh, that one. Uh, but I do have two others, so I have this one, and I have uh, that one. And let's give them names, let's call them A, B, and C. And I claim that every um, uh, element of pi 1 is a product of A, B's, and C's. Is, so in other words, A, B, and C generate pi 1. Why? So, take the knot, make it, uh, sorry, make it out of a solid metal wire, it can't move. Uh, make pi 1, I mean, the red lines, uh, use some, use some uh, flexible material for them, a rope, an actual rope. Okay, so now you have a rope in the complement of the knot. Now put a fan on the back side of the knot and blow air to, uh, towards, the, uh, towards your eyes, so towards the video camera. So basically, everything that's not hanging on the knot will get blown towards the, the base point. I am not giving a proof, I am giving a description. Okay? To prove, we will actually need to use Van Kampen in a more complicated way, but that's not what I want to do. Okay, so for example, consider uh, the loop that I'm about to draw here. Um, so, I want the loop that uh, goes over, above the knot here, under the knot here, above the knot here, and under the knot here. So consider this loop. By the way, this would be a stupid loop, 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 loop to consider, because it's clearly trivial. You can contract it to zero in between these two, within that crossing, right? In between the two strands that pass through this crossing. On the other hand, I could do this blowing procedure to it, 
and I will find that 1 is equal to. So let's see. I go here and I see a copy of A, right? If I blow these two parts, go to the... Uh, are, this from, from here and from here, I pull to the video camera, so I see a copy of A. Then I see a copy of uh, B inverse. Sorry, I don't see a copy of A. It goes over A. I'm being silly. It goes over A. There's nothing to see. Uh, uh, wait, which tells me that I've blundered. Have I? So if you want to draw everything below... Yeah, I, 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 I've blundered. I wanted to draw a different loop. I wanted to draw the loop that goes everywhere below. So uh, I'm, I'm just silly. I don't know why I did that. Just the loop that goes all under. Okay, we're a minute late. Is anybody rushing anywhere or, or can I go three more minutes? Is anybody rushing? No means... Uh, if somebody rushes, please say so and I will stop. I okay, because... Rush. What? Sorry? No rush. No okay, rush. good. So, so, sorry, so this is the loop I wanted to draw, and of course it's trivial also. So 1 is equal to A, then I go under B, but in the, in, in the opposite direction of B, so B inverse, times, then again I go under A, but in the opposite direction, uh, sorry, not A, now I go like C. So, right, the, the next passage is a C, is a copy of C. So, uh, I get a C, uh, but it's in the opposite direction, so C inverse, and then I get uh, a, and then I go over B with the positive direction. Okay? And this relation actually becomes, uh, well, this is uh, uh, A inverse is equal to C inverse conjugated by B, and the, the, the inverses were just a bad choice, so really it, it's equivalent to A is equal to C conjugated by B. Okay? Now, you have similar relations so, uh, for the other two crossings, and the, the claim is that pi 1 of the trefoil at the end becomes the group generated by A, B, and C modulo, sorry, modulo, three relations. A is C conjugated by B and cyclic permutation. So B is equal to A conjugated by C and C is equal to B conjugated by A. And it's, a, it, it's, not, the same, it's not the same group that I got before. So one has to prove that they are the same. Okay? Uh, I'll stop here. Uh, I still have more to say, but, but, but well, that's what Friday is for. And I didn't crash, and I, it's fine. Okay, so see you, see you on Friday. Bye.